Here's a review of the latest um, sling box hooked up through the iPad. This, uh, if you watched my previous video, the sling box solo with the iPad app, um, you'll also notice that the app's been changed just a little bit. They've come out with new updates and uh, kind of revamped the interface a little bit. But first off, we will uh, show you the interface here. You've got your disconnect. Your sources, since this is the Pro HD, I don't have any other sources hooked up. You could select up to a couple of different ones. But since I don't have that, it's not going to show up. Um, get your favorites, your aspect ratio. I don't think I have any favorites set up. I might actually. There we go. So I do have different favorites set up. This time I'm not going to use them, so I'll just click off of it. Got your uh, quality here. I always do auto because um, sometimes my internet's pretty crappy, so it'll switch off and on. Um, also, you've got the uh, guide here, and this is something that uh, you can actually bring this up full screen. If I knew how to click right, there we go. There's a handy little, uh, this is a handy little interface because you can select through either HD if you want to. Just click the wrong button there. You can tell. Them. Apparently don't want to click. There, there's a little plus arrow that makes it go up and down. Um, there's HD. I like just watching HD because that's looks the best, sounds the best. Um, it's kind of low dependent on how good of internet you have. Like I've said, it's I have terrible internet where I'm at, so it's sometimes things take a little longer. I mean, you can see all. This is pretty much the guide you'd see as as you're on your receiver, and uh, you know you can scroll through to whatever and. Click your channel. I'm just going to go to, I don't know, Law & Order looks good. Click that. It's going to switch here. And sometimes it could take, you know, two to five seconds. Like I said, your results are going to vary based on that. But, um, so those are, you know, the interface down there at the bottom. You can, since this is a, uh, um, a DVR capable receiver that I'm connected to, I can pause it. And I can play it, all that good stuff. Um, some other buttons up here. You've got all that there. You know, you can put the uh, you can put the channel you want in there. Click enter. It's going to take you to that channel. And then here we go with the remote. Click whatever button you want. Since we have a dish um, receiver, that's what we have. You get a dish remote. It's going to be different depending on what type of receiver you have. Um, it'll be the exact remote that you have, so it's just going to depend w during your setup what you select. So, we're going to go ahead and disconnect, take you out of here. Like I said, compared to the Solo, you're going to notice a huge Im improvement in uh, video quality. It looks way better on this screen compared to the Solo. I, I can't even recommend a Solo because it looks... I don't even know if they sell them anymore because the new ones that have just come out, new string boxes. But uh, if they are... Don't even think about getting a solo because it's not worth saving a couple extra bucks. Here in settings, you have a bunch of different options. Um, you can select your cellular, cellular quality if you're on a, you're an iPhone or whatever. Options are going to be the same here. Video quality on Wi-Fi, you know, I just have auto on all of them. Your launch preferences, you can have a couple different options. As you can see there for yourself, um, automatically connect and watch TV, automatically connect to a guide or don't automatically connect at all. I'm going to switch mine, automatically connect and watch TV. It's best option I think. Uh, you can select a home channel so as soon as it loads up it switches to your channel. I like Sports Center, so I'm just going to make mine 140. Um, show control bar and connection. I just have it on. And then there's also an enable favorite left to right gesture so you can drag the pen left to right and it'll um, switch through your favorites and then for dish users you can have it auto send when you select something so you don't have to actually click it on the remote it'll, whatever you type in it'll automatically send it I'm going to turn that to on Then you have uh, your sling player version and all that down there so if you have multiple devices I just have one I just click that but some people have five to ten of them I mean they're crazy with these things so it's going to list them all in there, and other than that, I mean, there really isn't a whole lot of uh, differences when it comes to all of this, so. 
I would uh, highly recommend this app. I mean, they've lowered it now. It's 15 bucks, which is reasonable. I bought it at 30 which yeah, is kind of, at the time, it was just like, you know, I've bought a sling box. I want to utilize it on all the devices that I have. And at 30 I mean, it just depends how much you use it. I use it all the time, so it was worth it to me, but uh, your results will vary. So, um, there we have it. I am going to uh, put some more videos out here of the Sling Player on a couple different devices, so stay tuned for those.